Hello, my name is Tao, and I'm from the class of 2023 of California North State University. In this video, I'll be talking about cefalodoxin proxital, or commonly known as Ventin. So how to take this medication? Before you take this medication, make sure to tell your healthcare provider if you are allergic to any medications, particularly antibiotics. If you will prescribe the tablet form of the medication, take it with some food to enhance absorption. Younger patients may be prescribed suspension. It can be taken with or without food. Um, you can store the suspension in the fridge and discard whatever is left of the medication after you finish the treatment or up to 14 days, whichever comes sooner. As with other suspension medication, make sure you shake it well before using it or giving it to your child. Report any signs of severe allergy reaction, such as rash, itchiness, shortness of breath, trouble breathing, and swelling. Let your healthcare provider know if you experience any severe diarrhea or use unusual side effects from the medication. And always make sure to finish your course of antibiotics to completely eradicate the infection. Cephalodoxin proxetyl or Ventin is a third generation cephalosporin. It is available in 100 milligrams or 200 milligrams tablet form. It is also available in powder form for reconstitution um, as a suspension. After reconstitution, the suspension should be stored in the refrigerator and it has a shelf life of 14 days. Some advantages to using cephalodoxin proxetyl is that this medication has been around for a long time and is, is a broad spectrum antibiotic, which makes it ideal for empiric use outpatient. And it has simple dosing regimen of twice daily, unless the patient has impaired kidney function. Some disadvantages to using this medication is that it is second line for most therapy um, and it requires renal dose and hemodialysis dosing adjustment. Cephalodoxin proxetyl is a prodrug that undergoes metabolism to be deesterified by the intestinal mucosa and become cephalodoxin, which is the active component. As with other beta lactams, it inhibits bacterial cell wall and prevents cell wall synthesis, which lead to autolysis and cell death. It is active against both gram negative and gram positive bacteria. Um, it has excellent activity against streptococci, E. coli, and Klebsiella pneumoniae. It has little activity against the Pseudomonas and Acinetobacter species, and it does have moderate activity against um, MSSA, but uh, cannot cover MRSA. Here's a look at the indications and dosing regimen for adult patients. The dosing regimen for a patient with a compromised kidney function is every 12 hours. For most upper respiratory tract infection, the duration of treatment is about 5 to 10 days, whereas more serious infections such as skin and soft tissue infection requires a higher dose with up to 14 days or longer depending on response. It can be it can also be used for uncomplicated UTI at a lower dose for 5 to 7 days. With patients whose creatinine clearance is less than 30 milliliter per minute, we can reduce the frequency to every 24 hours. If the patient is actively receiving hemodialysis, we can schedule the dose to three times a week after each hemodialysis session. And here are some dosing guidance for pediatric patients. They are divided into either under 12 years old or 12 years and older group. Dosing for patients under 12 years old is weight-based, weight while those over 12 years old um, have very similar dosing regimen for as with an adult patients. In some cases, such as community acquired pneumonia and uncomplicated UTI, pedi pediatric patients require a longer duration of treatment. In pediatric patients, Ventin is also indicated to use as prophylaxis against irinotecan-associated diarrhea. Cephalodoxin is contraindicated to anyone who has known hypersensitivity to cephalosporins. It should be used with caution in anyone with known hypersensitivity to beta-lactam, especially if the reaction is IgE-mediated. 
And anyone with a history of gastrointestinal disease, especially colitis, should use this medication with caution. Most patients can experience GI upset, such as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, and headache. Um, younger patients can experience diaper rash, and other serious adverse reactions that can occur with this medication is Stevens-Johnson syndrome, toxic ep epidermal necrolysis, or a C. diff infection. And that concludes my presentation. Here are my references. And thank you for tuning in.